It's me, Pushy Pulley the Spider. And boy, do I have a story for you. I was just swinging on my web, minding my own spider business, when suddenly, zoom, a toy rocket flew right past me. It was going so fast, I got dizzy just watching it. Then, whoosh, a paper airplane zoomed by, doing loop-de-loops around my web. My eight eyes could barely keep up. And just when I thought it couldn't get any crazier, crash, a bouncy ball came bouncing through, knocking over my tiny spider tea set. Oh no, what a mess. True, things are getting a little too wild around here. We need to learn how to stop all these zooming, whooshing, and crashing things. Here's what we're going to do today. We'll remember what we learned about moving objects. We will discover how to stop things that are moving. We will find out what works and what doesn't work for stopping. We will play some fun stopping games. Let's go! First, let's talk about things that move. Can you think of some things that move? Let's remember what we learned in the other videos. Remember when we talked about push and pull? We learned that we can use force to make things move. Like when you push a toy car, it rolls across the floor. Or when you pull a wagon, it moves towards you. Some things that move are cars and trucks zooming down the street, balls rolling across the playground, swings going back and forth when you push them, leaves floating in the wind, your legs when you run and play. But here's a tricky question. What happens when we want these moving things to stop? That's what we're going to learn today. Now, let's try a fun experiment to see how we can stop things that are moving. We're going to play a game called Rolling and Stopping. Here's what you'll need. A small ball, like a tennis ball or toy ball or a marble. A flat surface, like a table or the floor. Your hand, a piece of paper, a book or a block. Pause the video and gather what you need. Are you ready? Let's go! First, let's roll the ball. Find a flat surface where your ball can roll. Gently roll your ball across the surface. Watch it roll for a moment. Now, let's stop it with our hand. Roll the ball again. After one second, use your hand to stop the ball. What happened? Your hand stopped the ball. You used a pushing force to stop the moving ball. Let's try something different. Hold a piece of paper at the end of your flat surface. Roll your ball towards the paper. Watch what happens when the ball reaches it. Did the paper stop the ball? Probably not. The paper isn't strong enough. It's too soft and bendy. Now, let's use something stronger. Stand your book or block up at the end of your flat surface. Roll your ball towards the book or block. Watch what happens when the ball reaches it. Did the book or block stop the ball? The book or block should stop the ball. It's stronger than the paper, so it can push back against the ball and make it stop. Great job! You've achieved your next Argo star, little scientist! You've just learned something really important. To stop something that's moving, we need to use enough force. Let's talk about what that means. Remember how the paper couldn't stop the ball? That's because it didn't have enough force. The paper is too soft and bendy to push back against the ball. But your hand and the book were strong enough to stop the ball. They had enough force. Let's remember what we learned today. To stop something that's moving, we need to use force. Soft or light things might not have enough force to stop moving objects. The faster or heavier something is, the more force we need to stop it. We can use our hands, blocks, brakes, or other strong things to stop motion. That's all for today, my little Force Masters. 
This is Pushy Pulley, your eight-legged force of nature, signing off. Bye-bye.